So it kind of dealt with the same subject matter, if you will. You'll even see in Genesis 37. Now these, this was Joseph's dream. Remember when Joseph was little or young and he had the dream of all the, the sheaves? And the sheaves were, uh, I think it was 11 sheaves, uh, bowing down to him. That meant all, all of his brothers, all the tribes bowing down to him. And of course he goes and tells the brothers and then they were mad. You know, and sometimes, most of the time, we don't need to be telling our dreams. Because God is speaking to you about you. Not, he's not speaking, I'll, I'll never forget when, uh, I won't say who it was, uh, had a dream. Wives, if you dream that your husband is fooling around with somebody, don't get up and beat up your husband. <laughs> because God is trying to, to deal with you about something. He's not telling you, he's not telling you that he's doing something. He's telling you, you need to deal with something. You know, I've had, I've had more people that uh, have had dreams and it's like, well, well in, in the dream you were doing such and such and so and so. And they get an attitude and they come against the person that was in their dream and they go, well, I didn't do nothing. And that's the first rule of interpretation. When God gives you a dream, he's talking to you. He's not talking to you to go tell Trina something. Trina might be in your dream, but it, it but it's, it, and the symbols and things that are around you are usually people that are, are around you. But still, the first rule is God is talking to you. When he was talking to Joseph, it, it dealt with his brothers, but he wasn't telling the brothers what to do. He was telling Joseph what would come up. And that didn't come upon him for a long time. But then he had a second dream, a second dream, and it kind of dealt with the same thing, but now it included mama and daddy, as the sun and the moon and the stars and, and the, everything else was bowing down. And so and he went and told daddy, and, and daddy was going, so your mama and me are gonna bow down to you? And but basically they, he was going, you better go on. You know, because that was a disrespectful thing. And that didn't come to, it did come to pass, but not for years. Not for years. And even though Joseph's mom and dad didn't get angry with him, the brothers hated him. For a lot of reasons, but that didn't help when he see <laughs> They're going, oh, you're the baby, and we're going to bow down to the baby? Uh, I'm sure Reuben's going, I'm, I'm the firstborn. If anybody's going to be bowed down to, it's going to be me. You see, so it's not always wise for us to be flapping our jaws. I think when God speaks to us a lot of time, we tell way too many people. That's right. Mm -hmm. we, we tell way too many people. That's right. You know, we just do. But I, I tell you that to, to say that Joseph had two dreams of similar type, so God was establishing this. And sometimes I think that God has to give us supernatural, whether it's prophecy, whether it's a vision, whether it's a dream, and we wonder why it does, it's not coming to pass, because there's process a lot of times before that happens. And in the book of, I believe it's the book of Psalms, where David is saying about Joseph that the word of the Lord tried him. Have you ever been tried by a word? There's my, my scripture for my life is from the book of Job. And it says to God, you know the way that I take. When you have tried me, I will come forth as gold. So that's acknowledging we know that. Uh, see, we're always expecting it to happen next month. At the very latest, next year. I think about the prophecy that Carrington had when he was how old? Twelve. Twelve. <coughs> that's, that's the year of maturity in God's number. In God's number. He's getting ready to be 21. And that hasn't fully come to pass yet. And see, at 12, he was thinking it was going to happen at 13, at 14, at 15. At, but the word, that word has tried him. And if we think that we will get to the prophesied land without a process, 
we have lost our mind. Because we're not worthy, of, and I've said this before, we're not fit, and I mean fit, to bear what God has for us until we've been tried. We're not fit for it. Okay? So, I believe sometimes that God gives us a word twice to establish it in our spirit so that we will hold on when the winds start blowing, yeah. when the trial starts coming, yeah. when the pit starts coming, when the palace starts coming. And he's going, all I'm trying to do is be godly and look at what keeps happening. Looky, 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 what keeps oh. happening. And that's speaking to me right now. Because I'm going, God, we're doing everything we know to do. We, we're doing, and that includes all of us. I'm going, we're doing everything we know to do. Is that true of y'all? You're doing everything and we're going, we are so ready. My little girl in California was crying out to God about something. And she's, and just like I told you, these little bitty prayers that we do on Sunday, they, they're not... They're not hitting it. It's the effectual, fervent prayer where we hunger and we thirst to be in God's will, to be in God's purpose, to do something with our life that is more than the status quo when we won't be satisfied with that. And she no sooner got up from that prayer and there was an answer to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I said, see, little girl? When you call upon the name of the Lord, when you really call, not this halfway calling that we're doing. Uh, Pastor, I just felt this morning during rehearsal, I'm going as a people, we need to cry out for wisdom. We need to cry out for direction because the end of the age is upon us. We need to cry out for our purpose. We are the bride of Christ. Do you know what that is? When the bride appears, everything should fall back. You know, in, in a regular wedding, those of you that have been married, we're probably the only ones that haven't been back there, been married before, but I know about a wedding, I know about that. And when the doors open up, the bride doesn't sneak in on the side. <coughs> when those doors open up, there stands the bride. And when she walks, people rise in her presence. And I'm not talking about it for pride's sake. I'm not talking about that. But we need to realize who, not who we are, but yes, who we are, but whose we are. We are the, we are the bride of Christ. And they should be falling back when we enter into a situation. And I don't mean, I mean with the presence of God. What does the scripture say? Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of Yah is risen upon you. They should be able to say, I want what you have, give it. There is no bride on the face of the earth that sneaks into the church or sneaks out. She comes in with much fanfare and goes out. There's so much crisis going on and the bride needs to stand her little self up and begin to walk into these situations and watch the darkness go back. Yeah. But we can't push it back if we don't have the light. It, well, we've got the light, but we're not using the light. Amen. And light is understanding, y'all. It's understanding of the word of who we are, of whose we are, of the times that we are in. Okay? Okay. Back to the dreams. Number one rule of interpretation, dreams is telling you something about yourself. Okay? About yourself. I said we were going to talk about Joseph in the New Testament. Let me just give you the scriptures in Matthew 1, 19 through 20. Matthew this is uh, Mary, Mary and Joseph and, and Yeshua, that Joseph that we're talking about here. Because uh, God gave him a dream to correct his behavior. To correct his behavior. Because the scripture and a lot of times God has given us dreams to go knock it off. Whether it's pridefulness, whether it's something that we're dealing with, whether, and God is trying to go 
Turn around, go another way. Turn around. It says, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. This was after Mary came to him and said that she was with child. And they were not, they had not been together yet. And verse 20 says, it, because it says he was a just man and he, he was going to just divorce her privately and put her away. You know, just go on. You know, that type of thing. Because who would have believed that the Holy Ghost came upon her and made her pregnant? Amen. Okay? But verse 20 says, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth, and it goes on to say, and now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, and verse 24 says, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, he did exactly as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took him to wife, and Mary, and he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn. So you see, dreams can stop us from... Joseph was a just man. And he didn't want to cause her stoning. And so he was just going to put her away privately until the angel of the Lord came and explained the situation. Okay? Also in Matthew 2, it's all up in Matthew. In Matthew 2, verses 13 and 19, this was the wise men. Remember when the wise men came seeking after the child, the young child, Yeshua? And they went and told Herod what they were doing. And... Herod said, well, when you find him, you come back and you tell me, because I want to worship him too. Hallelujah. And it said that the wise men were visited by an angel at the dream, in a dream, saying, don't go back to Herod, go another direction. That's verse, verse 13. And then down in verse 19 of the same chapter, Joseph was told again to get up and take his family to Egypt to flee all the killing of the children, remember that? Of two years and none, he was told in a dream. So we see by this that God speaks in a dream uh, to not only to correct our conduct, but so that our ears can be open to bring insight. Because Joseph didn't know that Herod was killing everybody. The wise men didn't know, but God, God instructed because God knows. Holy Spirit knows, okay? So um, we're, we're out of time right now. Let me give you these next four. The first rule, dreams are trying to tell you something about yourself. God is talking to you. Number two is never force the interpretation of the dream. Let God give it to you. Let God give it to you, okay? And number three is the most natural interpretation is usually the right one. It's usually the right one. And I, I have down here for, remember when the, the butler and the baker were in prison with Joseph and they both had, had dreams and Joseph had interpreted the dream and to one of them, I think it was the winemaker, the cupbearer, he said, your head will be lifted up and your position will be restored to you. So the butler said, okay, well his dream interpretation, that was good. So I want it too. And Joseph said, your head will be lifted up off of your head. And you, basically he was, you will be hung <coughs> on a tree. So the, the wine bearer, he got his job back. The butler, he got hung. But Joseph was true to the interpretation and he told them. Joseph didn't have those dreams. The butler and the baker did. And it was a very natural progression of what the interpretation was. It's not as weird as we make it out to be sometimes. Okay? Um, number four, don't judge the importance of a dream that you remember until you see the interpretation. Okay. Let God give you the interpretation. And the last, number five, 
Scenes and symbols and people in our dreams, they represent things that in, are in our life. They're personal to us. Monique and David were in my, I know Monique and David. They were in my dream. There were some other people, I didn't know those people. But see, in those cases, God is talking to me and that they were just symbols of other parts of me. And then me was in the dream and he was speaking right to me. <coughs> do, you, do you see that? That the people in there will usually be people that uh, represent somebody that's, that's close to you. And just in closing, let me just say, don't ever fear, don't ever dread, because the word says don't do that. But I think we need to honor our dreams especially those that we feel are from God, pay attention to them. You can ask for counsel about them, because the pastor or I or whoever, whoever can go to God the same way Joseph went to God. Or God can give you the interpretation, but if you just blow it off, he can't, and so he's going to have to try to do another way. So I just say, let's honor those times that God has given us for him, him to speak to us. And that's a lot of time. And today is one of those times. When we come into the house looking for direct, I come into the house every Sunday looking for the next step, the next instruction, the next word. Father, I just ask that, and I thank you that we do have ears to hear what you are saying to the church.